Hi, I'm Rudy McKee, and welcome to Udaya Online. This series is called Forged by Fire, and we're going to do some forging, some tempering, some hammering, and some strengthening. So we're going to start it. By the way, welcome and thanks for joining us. Christian, will you come take this hammer away from me? Thank you. Well, you guys uh, at home, come into Virasana with these kids. Welcome, everybody. And if you're comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. And by the way, if you have a knee issue and sitting on your knees is funky for me, it's kind of funky. I got a meniscus thing because you can sit cross-legged or you can sit on top of your feet. And we'll do a mild vinyasa where your feet are... How about for the first one, put your feet all the way together, sit on your heels, and that will kind of elevate you from being too deep into the knees. And if you're still too deep, you know, the technique of a towel behind your knees or, or better yet, just cross your ankles in uh, sukhasana, the seated position. But I want you just to take a few moments and kind of find your breath before we get this thing going. And I uh, hope you enjoy the scene we have here for you. We got fires, we got statues, we got dragons. Those dragons will come in handy later. But uh, as you hear, just, you know, we sometimes need to stop before we start. So we're just going to be still. Not going to hold you long. I know it's about an hour class for you, but just a minute to kind of gather our senses, gather our tools of focus and breath work. If you understand pranayana, pranayama breath, start, or ujjayi pranayama breath, start using that now. If you, if you can, just breathe through the nose the best you can. Deep inhales, long, slow, I even call them passionate exhales. So let's get started, shall we? I want you guys, from, from this position, I want you just to walk up onto your hands and knees. And we're going to move through a little bit of a cat-cow. And I, I want you to do that. These kids will go ahead and get started. Uh, you guys here with me, inhale, tell up, heart forward, soft cow. And then exhale, round and squeeze. At home, as you do the cat-cow, we're going to do it for about maybe a dozen repetitions. I want you to think about slowing down the parts of the spine that move very quickly. And that's usually the neck and the lumbar. You know, because those things have a lot of movement to them and focus more on the parts of the spine that move very, very slowly. And in this case, it's usually the thoracic, the space between the shoulder blades. And then the breath is really cool here, particularly on the exhale, like Angela, when you really round the back and you control the contraction of the abdomen, it's a strong contraction. And the inhale, of course, when the tail goes up, heart goes forward, and you kind of stretch the belly. So within the process, I'm sure we do these a few times throughout the series of classes. But most importantly, moving with the breath, mobilizing and waking up the spine, and being restrained where the spine moves quickly and being focused where the spine moves slowly. Good. Then just come back into a natural flat spine position. Now we're going to do this next thing in a little bit of a repetition. So let's break the first one down. We're going to take the right leg and extend it straight back behind us. Just the right leg solely. And I'll show you on Lauren here. I want you guys to roll the outer right hip to the floor, so the right rear and the right hip roll down. And you push. I like to push through my right heel to engage my right hamstring. And lean into the right arm. And then, of course, take the left fingertips in front of you. And don't worry about looking forward. Looking forward to the front of your house does you no good. It's not no, no beneficial to the neck or no greater benefit to the neck. But it's the... Looking down, so lengthening the back of the neck. And the left triceps wraps towards the floor. So that, I don't want to hold it too long, but I want you to just feel that. And then we'll set the whole thing down, and we'll do the other side. We'll take just the left leg, and we'll turn the outer left hip down. And then Alexis here will show you how to extend the right arm forward with the right arm in the handshake position. And I stumbled across it a moment ago. By looking forward, there's no greater benefit. Actually, if you look forward in a home, you may want to try, but try very gently. Look up towards the front of your uh, house and notice how that stretches the neck a bit. And then just look down, basically down your nose. And feel the, I like to kind of imagine a stretch from my right pinky finger all the way through my left pinky toe. So it's like what I call a cross diagonal stretch. And then firm the belly. Now, what I like to do is I like to do it in kind of a vinyasa style. This class doesn't have the typical vinyasa. Take one more inhale, lift it, set it down. And on the inhale, do the other side. Right leg, left arm, inhale, and down. Set it down. Other side, 
Inhale, left leg, right arm. Set it down. And do eight more at your own cadence. Right leg, left arm. And down. Seven more. Inhale is when you lift. Exhale is when you set it down. Six more. Inhale, set it down. Don't go for height, go for length. Inhale, six more. Set it down. Inhale, five more. Set it down. I may have lost count, but I think you're okay. Inhale, four more. Set it down. Inhale, three more. See, we're doing repetition. Set it down. It's like taking a hammer. Inhale, is that nine? Set it down. Inhale, you guys hear, hear was that ten? Ten, we'll call it ten even if it's not. And set it down and pause. Go stand up on your knees, everybody. Stand up on your knees for camel. Make sure you camel your knees are about hips distance apart. Place your hands on the waistband, right, you know, right on the back of your uh, 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 pants or your shorts, and with your fingers pointing down. And don't over aggressively pull the elbows towards each other, but retract the shoulder blades. Bring the inside edges of the shoulder blades together. Lift the chest. Look forward and do the mildest back bend you've ever done. Just lifting the heart, gentle, sweet, tiny back bend. And look at me. So instead of dropping my head back, I'm going to keep looking forward. And this isn't a backbend class. As a matter of fact, we're going to actually avoid most backbends today. So I want you to just have a little bit just so the spine has that movement. So maybe in your practice today thinking, okay, it's, it's one of very few backbends. So let me just explore a little bit of it. And then from there, use your stomach and just kind of pull yourself up. And we're going to walk our hands back onto the floor. I want you guys to just find your way into downward facing dog. Just right into downward facing dog. And take a few breaths and breathe here. Now, as you're getting into down dog, just shimmy into it. We're in no hurry, so just take your time and shimmy into the pose. I invite you to fidget around. If you watch these guys at home, a lot of them practice with me a lot. They know what fidgeting means. And in our fidgeting, it means prescribed movement that creates or subscribe physical movements, which creates energetic movement. You know, in yoga, still postures, like, once they'll eventually move to stillness. But in still poses, we look for energetic movement. And in physical movement, we look for mindful stillness. So we're always caught in that little contrary compliment, if you will. Now, again, we're not going to do very many cobras today at all in this particular class. So I want to come forward and just get you that feeling of backbend again. So in a moment, we're going to float to plank position when you're ready, upper push-up position. And just for kicks, everyone in the room, you at home, bear with us as well. Notice where your knees are. Lower your knees until your knees touch the floor. Now, lift the feet, cross the ankles, gaze heart, pull the heart a little bit forward, elbows in, and in slow motion, Let's lower all the way up to our bellies so it's not very intrusive into our low backs or our shoulders or elbows or wrists or anything. Now, when you get there, lay flat. And slide into a sphinx position. So in other words, walk your hands out in front of you. Put your palms flat on the floor. Elbows a few inches in front of the breastbone. So if you look down at your breastbone, get your elbows in front so you can imagine you're trying to pull your chest through your biceps. And take your legs and swim your legs back and then like Lauren here, I want you to press down to the tops of your untucked feet and try to pull your heart through your biceps. Now in yoga, there's two types of things. There's an action, which you can't really see a movement. When I asked Angela to pull her heart forward through her thumbs, it's not going to really happen, right? It's just an action of a feeling you feel internally. A movement would be something like, inhale, sweep your arms to the sky. So movement and actions are different. So a lot of times we do actions. For example, velcro the feet and pull the belly button through the biceps. Of course, that's just an action, but it gives you more, kind of a more of an energetic movement inside. From there, drop the chin to the floor very, very slowly. Just do one, do one sweet cobra, hands in cobra position, bum soft, thumbs in line with the breast line. Inhale, come up into your first cobra, maybe your last cobra of the class. And then when you're ready, tuck your toes and pull it back into downward facing dog. 
Huh, and then once again, wiggling to your down dog. Technical stuff, I know a lot of you practiced your Word 365 series. You've done all the Udaya online tips. You work with Jules Mitchells and Vitas and myself and Jeff and the tons of people. You know down dog, of course. I'm just going to remind you the hands are about shoulders distance apart. One thing I found since the last time I met you, last time I saw you, is that one day, 25 years later, I looked up at my hands and I noticed my middle finger was lined up with the front corners of my yoga mats. Now, my shoulders may be a little wider than yours or more narrow, depending. So your hands may vary as the commercial goes. But I found that gave me perfect rotation of shoulders. I show on, on Angela, you can take the outer triceps, wrap them towards the pinky toes, protract and widen the shoulder blades, draw the hips back. Think of down dog not as a hamstring stretch, stretch so much, which it, which it is, but think of down dog as more of a pose to lengthen and free the spine. And y'all still breathing? Okay. From here, I want you to take a big inhale. Pull your hips back into kind of an apex of a stretch. Bend your knees. Look up towards your fingers and take your sweet time. No hurry. Probably not hopping just yet. Just walk your feet right up into your hands. And when you arrive up there, go ahead and bring the feet all the way together for a moment. And on an inhale, slide your palms onto your shins if you have a tendency to hyperextend your knees, put your hands on the outside of your shins so you're not pressing into your shins, creating more hyperextension, which isn't necessarily a horrible thing. If your legs hyperextend, that's the way they were made. But we don't want to press firmly into the back of the knee. So me, I like to grab the shins and press my lower legs back and pull the heart forward, long story short. And then on an exhale, fold into yourself and take a couple breaths. Now, you notice how we did that uh, chaturanga a few moments ago, the, the modified chaturanga. I want you to think about using that modified chaturanga today, particularly in this next A series we got coming up, so keep that in mind. You here with me, climb back on your fingertips, pull the heart forward again, and then on an exhale, fold again. And we're finally going to come up to standing. Inhale, press down and rise up and reach for the ceiling generously and fold the hands right into the heart and pause. So I've really slowed the practice down lately. I've, I've, I've really enjoyed what I call the, the pause for the cause. Stopping once in a while and just kind of finding center again in case you got kicked off center. It's not bad to get kicked off center. You want to be challenged where you may lose your, you know, lose your marbles a bit, but it's always good to come back. So, Think about these Surya Namaskar A. We're in the Surya Namaskar A series without the vinyasa that we typically do. So you have to kind of pay attention, have an open mind, and don't go automatic pilot. Even these kids don't really know what's coming. We haven't rehearsed this. So Surya Namaskar A, no vinyasa. So listen. On an inhale, sweep the arms up to the ceiling. And on an exhale, fall all the way forward. Now, now, what I'd like you to do is climb onto the fingertips, pull the heart forward, and then just simply as that, step back, upper push-up position, and just kind of hold the thought for a moment. Now, you're more than welcome to use your knees. Remember how we use the knees to do the modified chaturanga? You can still do push-ups here. If you're strong enough to do push-ups, you don't have shoulder injuries, elbow injuries, you don't have a tendency to hammock your low back and flop, then do the push-up. If not, you're going to put your knees down and modify. Matter of fact, Angela's sweet enough to modify for you. So with me, bend your elbows, tap your chin, and slowly press up. One. Pause at the top. No cobra that, Angela. So I already called Angela doing a cobra. No cobra. Bend the elbows, tap the chin. Slow, elbows, hands, take the heart forward, shoulders back. Slowly press up and downward facing dog. Now here's what I noticed here, and I bet you the same thing happened at home. Some of you went down and your shoulders went forward and you collapsed the chest into the chaturanga part of the push-up. So if that's you, keep the knees down, keep those shoulders pulled back, keep those shoulders integrated. All right, we'll try it again, but not, not yet. How about this? Take a big inhale, pull your hips back, and then you're going to bend your knees, look forward, and walk the feet into the hands. If you decide to hop at home, inhale, glance forward, and you live in an apartment and people live below you, fold. They don't want a shaking chandelier. 
Inhale, press down to rise up and reach for the ceiling. 25 years later, I'm still stepping forward. Hands the prayer. I did hop forward once and the whole building collapsed. Inhale, sweep the arms to the ceiling. And then on an the exhale, hinge and dive in. Inhale, lengthen forward. Step back, plank, hold the horses. We're going to up the ante and potentially do four of those push-ups. So if I was you, I would definitely use my knees considering there's four. Bend the elbows, touch the chin. Press up, one. Bend the elbows, touch the chin. Press up, two. Just two more. Bend the elbows, touch the chin. Press up, three. Almost everybody except Miss Cocky Flory over there. Bend the elbows, touch the chin. Press up, four. Downward facing dog. Now, we've got two more sets. On these next two options, I'm going to give you two more options. I'm going to give you an option of doing a fraction of the prescribed number or holding plank the entire time, using your knees, or doing the push-ups themselves. Inhale, pull your hips back. Bend your knees. Look towards your fingers. Walk. Feet to hands. Inhale, lengthen forward. Fold in. Press down to come up to standing. Inhale, press down to rise up. Prayer position. All we're doing, everybody, is we're rubbing two sticks together, trying to create a friction. Inhale, trying to find some of the fire you see around the set. Fall on you, internal fire. We're still stoking our internal combustion. Inhale, lengthen forward. Plank position. No vinyasa, plank. Listen potentially, and that's the word, potentially six push-ups. Any versions of those, if you're with us, I'll count out just the general cadence. Bend the elbows, tap the chin. Press up. Maybe you can alternate. Maybe you can do part of them without the push-up, part of them with the knees down. Bend the elbows, touch the chin. Press up. Lauren's going statically. Masha's going statically. Bend the elbows, touch the chin. Press up. That's three. Bend the elbows, touch the chin, press up four. Bend, you know they're getting good when the girls' ponytails begin to vibrate. Pick, press up five. Una mas, that's Spanish. Bend the elbows, touch the chin, that's six. Press up, downward facing dog. Oh boy. That's pretty good. It's very funny. I skipped vinyasa because I was worried about shoulders, and now we're doing push-ups. <laughs> Inhale, draw the hips back. I'm very tempted to not do a fourth set, but you know I got faith in you at home. These guys here, not so much, but you at home. Bend and knees, look forward, feet to the hands. We're going to do one last set. Inhale, glance forward. And then, believe it or not, we're going to get into the theme of the class, fold. Press down to come up to standing. Inhale. And exhale. How you guys feeling here? You okay? All right. We're going to do one more set. Inhale. Swing the arms. Fall forward. Do not be stubborn. Inhale. Lengthen forward. Step to plank. Hold it for a moment. All right. Contemplate. We are going for eight. You can hold this thing statically the entire time. You know your versions, okay? Let's go. If you're, if you're with me, bend the elbows, touch the chin. Press up. One. Let's go here to Christian for a minute. He's all, bend the elbows, touch the chin. Two. Mm -hmm. you're, on the, you're on the spot. Bend the elbows, touch the chin. Three. Don't make me get one of these hammers. Bend the elbows, touch the chin, four, Alexa, good for you. I honor those of you who are smart enough to make your own decisions. Bend the elbows, touch the chin. How many is that, six? Is that six? Two more. 
Bend the elbows, touch the chin. Seven, not another one to rest in entire time. One, one to grow on. Bend the elbows, touch the chin. Press up. Let's leave that behind. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Ah. Oh. You know what we need? We need to look. We need to rest. We're going to step the right foot forward. Right foot forward. Pause there. Man, just feel, if nothing else, feel something contrary to pushing up. Wiggle the back toes back a little bit. Get the, get the back leg in a, in a different zip code and very, 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 very softly set your left knee on the floor and climb both hands onto the top of the right knee and pause. Now, the theme of the stretch, I named the stretch uh, Forged by Fire is the series, but this particular class is called No Vinyasa because I felt like we were doing too many vinyasas a lot of times. Uh, this practice, I'm, we're going to work on the front of the quadriceps, the psoas, the hip flexors, the quadriceps. That's really going to be my target for you today. But as we get into the quadriceps, the big four strands of muscles in front of your legs, I want you to also protect your low back. So, for example, in this low lunge, I want you to walk your hand up your thigh bone a little bit and see if you can lift the hip points up and drop the tail. That's one reason I have the back knee on the floor. Now, if your hands are way out in front of you, there's a tendency to be folded over your femur bone. So as you walk your hands up your thigh bone, there's a tendency to drop the tail and lift the low belly. So you want to feel, excuse me, Lauren, you want to feel like you're going to stretch below the belly button from way down there. Now, to emphasize the stretch of the left quadricep, keep the right hand on the right thigh and take the left fingertips up to the ceiling. Left fingertips up. And use, use the right arm. I like to imagine that my right hand is grabbing my thigh bone and pushing it forward to the front wall. But you have to have a dual action, don't you? So as the right knee is pressed forward, you pull the right outer hip back. That's one side of the pose. As you get that side of the pose working, you work the left hip around. So it's almost as though from your left pinky toe all the way through your outer left shin, outer left thigh, outer left hip, you're working the hip forward, the left hip forward. Y'all feel that stretch? Man, you should feel like you're being dissected from left pinky. When you talk line of energy, from left pinky finger to left pinky toe, get enamored with that stretch, but also protect your low back and firm your belly. I usually just stay right here. If you feel like you got even more freedom and you'll take the, both arms up in this full expression, try, if you go into a full expression of both arms up, try to contain the front body. Don't let the front body explode out in front of you and compress the low back. So keep the front body kind of like corseted in. I always imagine that the front body is a corset being laced together and the, and the abdo abdominal muscles support the low back. Take one more inhale. Now listen to this. I just want you to bring your hands to the floor and get you going to a half split. Just straighten the front leg and go to a mild half split. Just keep the back knee on the floor. At home, try not to sit on your back heel. The minute you sit on your back heel, you'll tend to just to collapse. So lengthen forward and imagine you're turning to the outside of your right leg. Again, another one of those actions, not a great movement. And if you decide to go to your leg, I always like the word toward versus to. If you decide to go toward your leg, just lift your chest and fold out over your leg. And eventually, some of you at home, I'm sure, are so flexible, you can just kind of rest on your leg and, and breathe. Now change the emphasis into the back of the right hamstring. The first emphasis was the front of the left thigh. This emphasis is the back of the right hamstring and also the length of the spine. Good. Rebend the right knee. Tuck the back toes and step back down dog. Down dog. And take just a moment. This is one of those pauses for the cause. I think in one of the prior classes on Udaya, I called it asana butter. It's like you do an asana and you just you sit back from the asana and you just let it spread out. So it goes from local to global, like that first pose was about the left quadricep, and then the right hamstring. Get the down dog and let the, the whole pose just kind of, the sequence emanate into the whole body as a whole. We're going to do the other side, of course. Slide your feet together. Step the left foot forward into that same preliminary lunge. Drop the back knee to the floor. Now you notice why it's important to get that back leg way back behind you to emphasize. Good, Lauren, it's a good idea. Lauren's going to double up her knee. So if you guys got knee issues, another reason you want your leg back behind you so you're not right on top of your patella, the leg is more of a diagonal. 
And then climb the hands onto the left thigh and lift the chest up. Now, the other class later on in this series is about shifting perspectives. A lot of times you'd be in this pose, you'd be thinking it's about one thing, but I'd like you to think, and it is about whatever you may want. You may think this is about a left angle of my left knee. It is. You could think this is about my back bend. Well, it could be. But today, I want you to change the perspective and make it about the stretch of the right thigh and the support of the low belly. Keep the left hand where it is. Take the right arm up to the ceiling. And use that right arm as inspiration. You know, you're only, there's only two reasons to do anything, inspiration or desperation. Use the right arm as inspiration to extend the heart. Lift the heart all the while, firming the belly to support the low back, containing the front body. So let's say, for example, you went into a big back bend here, and all of a sudden the emphasis left the, the right quadricep stretch, and today we're about the right quadricep. So you back off the back bend, and you stay with the right quadricep. You can make this pose about a thousand different things. Today, we're making about the stretch of the right thigh. Take both arms up if you feel very comfortable about it. And then breathe. You know, there comes a point in your posture where once you, held, once you get the muscular shape formed, then there's the only thing left to do is take the breath and feel the, 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 uh, the available shape with breath or with prana or with expression or with artistic expression. Take one more inhale, bring both hands to the floor, straighten the left leg, and pause. I didn't mention on the other side, but if you want to reach out with the right hand and grab the toes and pull yourself into a deep reflection, it kind of works, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And deep breathing. So the stretch gives you a perception or, or a um, priority, I would say, of the posture. So scan your body and see where the body is, you know, the squeaky, the squeaky wheel gets to grease. Scan your body, and particularly the left hamstring, and see where you need the most attention. And you, you know, we'll say breathe into your left hamstring. Well, well, we mean bring your attention to your hamstring by focusing on the breath. Let's re-bend the left knee. Tuck the back toes and step back to downward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Ah. Step the right foot forward. Right foot forward. Let's go into a pure crescent. Press up the crescent. Inhale, arms up. Now again, on the mild side of the class thus far, just working into those quadriceps. Once again, everybody, a little bend to the back knee. Just the ever slightest bend to the back knee. As you bend your back knee and you stay into the front heel, start to turn your body. I'll show you way over here on Masha. Start to turn your body to the right and spread the arms out laterally. We're going to do this twist later that's going to take advantage of this previous work. Notice how a lot of times as you twist, just if I look at these kids, their right hip comes a little forward. Keep pulling the right hip back. Keep Reacquire that back leg, breathing. Now, as I look at them, I think they've all turned enough. I want you guys to look back and find your left hamstring. Let your right hand rest on your left hamstring. It's a little bit like that previous pose we did with our knee down, isn't it? Now, Lauren, look forward. Find your fingertips and take the fingertips up to the sky. Lift the head. Control the front body. Be more enamored with the stretch along the front of your left thigh with the potential to want to over back bend here. A lot of backbendy people, they tend to go to their strengths. Your greatest strengths can become your greatest weakness. So in your yoga practice, find your weaknesses and bring those up and find your strengths and restrain those and we'll find balance. Find balance in your breath as well. Y'all feel that stretch? Is that delicious? That's delicious. Take both arms up. Take one more inhale. Hands to the floor, down dog. You know what we're going to do? We'll step the left foot forward into crescent. Dog and step, left foot, crescent. Remember, we're all about the right leg today. Now, something I haven't mentioned, try not to overstretch the back leg. If you feel like you're overstretching the hip flexors and the psoas, there's such a thing as overstretching. If you feel like you're starting to overstretch in this part of the body, just imagine drawing the head of the thigh bone back. You have to bend the knee to draw the head of the thigh bone back. You may kind of restrain that stretch if you're very bendy. Turn to your left, spin your arms out laterally. Feel that. We're going to do two other twists today, but I want you to feel 
just without leverage, the, the, the other two twists we have today will, will apply external leverage. So here you just got internal leverage, just the strength of your core turning. If you feel like I can't, I haven't turned enough to easily grab my right hamstring, stay here. If you can easily grab the hamstring without tweaking out the low back, do so. Then look forward, Jen, and find your fingertips. Look up and find the fingers. It's a balancing pose. Every balancing pose, you get into a first, there's this little quiver, and you've got to wait that quiver out. Wait the quiver out. Let it stabilize. Stay with it. Y'all breathe. You breathing? I'm looking. I can tell if you're breathing. Normally, you don't pass out if you're breathing. Take both arms up, full stretch, hands to the floor, downward facing dog, downward facing dog. Oh boy, oh boy, right foot, crescent. Nice to know that you're just doing crescent today. There's no warrior one today. I think there may be one warrior two, but I don't even think there's one warrior two. I think we're all about crescent. This next pose I find a little bit maddening. I want you guys to bring your hands in a prayer position. Now, you know how we, you guys don't do it here, but you know how we usually took the elbow and clip it to the right knee? I want you guys to take your left elbow, turn it like you're going to clip the elbow to the knee, but watch Angela here. She's going to hover about an inch off the knee. First, she's going to hover. Second thing she's going to do is think, would he get away from me? (laughs) And just hover. Don't touch that knee. Jim, you touch your knee? Don't you touch that knee. At home, don't you dare touch that knee. Christian, get that elbow to the outside of your knee, son. Don't touch the knee, though. Hold that. Masha has a leg. She goes, eh, it's all right. She's rushing. She doesn't commit to much. See this back shoulder? <laughs> Draw it back behind you, almost like the back shoulder is trying to touch the friend behind you. Three. I want everyone in the room to re-fi- refire the back leg. Refire the back leg. Y'all got to be in pain right now. Why do you think we got fire around here? Where's, where's my hammer? Now, there's two ways to come out of this, desperately and artistically. Very artistically float back up into crescent. Oh, hold that thought. Now, bring your hands to prayer. I want everyone to try this at first. I want you to bend your back knee a little bit. Take the left elbow, hook it to the outer right knee. This time we're going to use leverage. Now keep the back knee bent until you can fully extend the spine. Now I want you to re- reignite the back leg, reaffirm the back leg straight back again, F- straighter. Lift the back of the left knee towards the ceiling. Now as you do that, notice how the back leg at home, you'll notice the back leg informs the spine. The more power in the back leg, the more extension you have. Now use the left elbow to lift the chest off the thigh. The more you lift up the chest, the more rotation you'll get. Now, to get that rotation, particularly on the exhale, drop the shoulder back. Extend the base of the skull. Lean the base of the skull back. How you doing, Jen? Three more breaths. Now, one more time. In slow motion, press up the crescent. That's a come to Jesus moment. Hands to the floor, down dog. Down dog. Oh. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> I should give one of those fire extinguishers. Left foot steps forward, crescent. While we're young. Well, while y'all are young. Arms up. <sighs> yeah, it was very fun. I wish I was with you at home because about 40 minutes into the class, I assume we are. I don't know what the time is. I start looking at faces more than I look at bodies because the face, Shakespeare said, to know thy faces and know thy heart. So I can look at their faces and see what's going on. Prayer position. We'll call it the fake twist. Right elbow never touches a knee. See, I want you guys, did you touch the knee? Jennifer almost touched it. You're very, you're close. I want you guys to understand where the power in the post can come from. Get that back leg, Christian. Keep turning. You got to yearn to turn. I want you guys, here's something I found the other day after 900 years of doing this stuff. When you come up in a second, I want you to find a connection between your left heel and your left bum. 
So starting now, drive into your left heel and rise back up to Crescent. I'm going to invite you at home to regain your dignity for a second. Take another inhale, and let's go for the pure twist. Right elbow to the outer left knee, left elbow to the ceiling. Turn again and breathe. Five. Now, remember, if you wanted to, I, I, at home, I didn't mention I was a miss. I was in my head further down the road. But I like to start with a bent knee until I get the elbow in, until I can just start to find the shape of the pose. And then it's almost like you uh, turbocharge it. Then you reaffirm the back leg. And notice as you fire that back leg continuously, the back leg, I was taught a long time ago, the back leg, the legs inform the spine. More leg, more extension. Right elbow, more pressure, more lift. More lift, more length. More length, more rotation. For three. For two. Alexa, you turn it, honey. You'd like to be casual there for a second. Anytime you get casual, I must come over and see why the casualness. Now you're, you're breathing, kinda. In slow, mo Angela, where are you going? In slow motion, press back up. Uh-oh, my canary just came out of the pose. That tells me something. Big inhale, hands to the floor, down dog. Yeah. Forged by fire is just that. These, this, the fire and the hammers and all the forging stuff that you see is really about, to me, repetition is about tempering and stealing and then honing and sharpening. So each time we do a rep, this will be the fourth one coming up. And each time we do one, I just, I, my imagination is we go deeper psychologically. We go deeper physiologically. We go deeper physically, of course. Uh, philosophically, right foot steps forward. Stay on your fingertips, right foot forward. Pause. If you got a block at home, I didn't, I didn't bring a block today in this particular class. I didn't want to clutter up the scene. But if we had a block, it'd be great. But you guys at home, put a block under your left hand. Those of you here, left fingertips. Even if you could put a palm flat, matter of fact, uh, Lauren's going to put a palm flat. Angela's going to be on the fingertips. Everyone else, fingertips or palm, right arm up to the ceiling. Slowly. See, what I see in Lauren's pose, because she put her hand down, she had to get deeper, so her right hip popped up. See, we're not squared here. So she got on, get onto your fingertips. She gets onto her fingertips. There's a chance she can lift this head, left thigh, the head of the left hip up or drop the right hip down by bending the right knee further. And she's getting fatigued. And when you get fatigued, you start to have compensations, right? You start to compromise the poses somewhat. It's okay, sometimes you have to compromise the pose, but it's better to understand you're compromising and work within that if you have to. Three, left arm is in kind of a side arm press, isn't it? And the right arm is a continuation of the left arm where there's a big, beautiful heart interrupting it. And then you got the big lunge again. Take one more inhale. Now listen, just for kicks, we're going to bring the right hand to the floor, and we're going to pause there for a second, and we'll sh turn the back foot flat, and we'll straighten the front leg, and just give a momentary reprieve, and take a few breaths. Doesn't that feel good? And can you keep drawing the right hip back and in? You know, in this pose, you'll see a lot of times right hips pop out and left hips start to turn open. So we're going to contrary that. We're going to draw the left hip forward and down and the, and the right hip back and in. And press down the inner edge of the foot. Draw the whole inner edge of the foot, press it down, and then the whole outer right thigh pulls back. Anyway, we'll work on that in another class. Bend the right knee, step the left foot to meet the right foot, feet together. Inhale, climb onto the fingertips, heart forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, press down and rise all the way up to standing. Inhale, rise up. And prayer position. How do you guys feel thus far? You good? Y'all feel those legs? Let's do a non-vinyasa vinyasa. 
Inhale, sweep the arms up. And on an exhale, fall forward. As I watch these kids, you, I'll be talking to you guys at home in a second. Inhale, glance out on the inhale. They're going to step back and they're going to go to plank for a moment. They're just going to rest in plank. While they rest in plank, those of you at home, this would be a great stretch. When you read the description, it would be describe this pose as a great front quadricep or front leg opening stretch. Well, I'll describe it for you on there. But it's a great stretch. Though you've got tight legs, you got feel like you got tight psoas or hip flexors. This class is totally, mostly just simply about that. Uh, you guys here, go back to down dog and step the left foot forward and stay in a deep lunge. And take a moment, you know, gradualism is, a, is my new favorite word since the last time I saw you guys, last time I filmed with you. Gradualism is an ism, it's a philosophy. I want to ask these guys to take the twist in a moment, left arm up, but I want you to do it in such a gradual non-rushed way. You get your feet right, you get your hips right, you get your spine right, you get your right arm where you want it. You wait for the breath. You know, you're going to take that left arm in a, up in a second. When are you going to take it? You're going to take that left arm up on an inhale. So you gradually wait for the inhale to be ripe. Take advantage of the inhale to sweep the arm up. So eventually, left arm up. And then take your time. I think a lot of poses should be held about 15 breaths you know, I used to fly around the room. I think maybe, I think I've got smarter. Also, I think, the, I think you can become stronger if you move slower. And I think also I got so many birthday candles on my cake. It will, t it will tend to slow you down. But five breaths just to figure out the shape. Five breaths to explore the energetic quality and potential of it. And five breaths to mentally endure it. Take one more breath here, full stretch. Left hand down, turn the back foot flat, and very slowly with gradualism, pull the left leg straight and be in no hurry. Inhale, pull your spine out, adjust your right hip forward and your back hip back and in, left hip back and in, and fold. Take a few breaths. Well done, everybody. Now, in this pose, intense side stress, they call it, is the, is the translation. You want the intensity on the left side, so you need to keep pulling the left hip back toward. At home, you're looking down, aren't you? At home, look at the inside, inside edge of your right heel. You see it? All you're doing to create the intense side stretch is you're pulling the whole outer left flank, outer left hip, back towards that heel. Figuring out a way to keep that back foot grounded and drawing the head of the right thigh bone back. So really the feet, the, the feet alignment, if you're having a problem here, the back foot's probably your nemesis. Bend your left knee, step your right foot to meet your left foot, feet together again. Inhale, pull the chest forward again. Exhale, fold. And press down to come up to stand. Inhale, rise all the way up. And prayer position. Again, inhale, sweep your arms up. No vinyasa. Exhale, dip and fall forward. Breath is out when you arrive at the bottom. Inhale, lengthen onto fingertips. Extend the side body. Step to plank. Hold plank for a moment. Down dog. Right foot steps forward. Pause there. See Lauren fling that leg up. We shall break her of that habit. Drop the left knee to the floor. Leg like that could kill somebody. Jesus. <laughs> Take your right foot and walk it two or three inches to the right. Do this in stages. Gradualism. Turn the right toe out about 45 degrees. Left knee's on the floor, isn't it? Lean into your left hand. Now, some of you could put your forearm down, but you're not. I'm going to stick with my gradualism thing. If you've got a left knee injury, you're going to probably skip this, okay? If you're good with the left knee, you're going to bend the left knee, and the left heel's going to come up by the left bum. And you're going to take that right arm, you're going to swing around. I'm going to have Angela 
Dancer pose is her favorite anyway. I'm going to have her grab the outer foot. Pause. Now hold your horses a minute. You staying there, Flora? Flora's staying there. Can you get that foot? Doesn't matter if you can get it or not. A lot of times if you can't get it, you have to kind of turn your body. I've actually had teachers teach me to whip that arm around. I thought it was a little violent, but actually, you know, I had to get a little momentum swinging around. If you had a strap, for example. Now, Jennifer's going to tell me when to stop because it's like the waiter putting pepper on your salad. You don't, she says, stop. I just got here. <laughs> okay, then hold that. Then let that go. Let that go, and I want you to go into the previous stretch. Climb your hand onto your knee. Remember the previous stretch, and then work that way. So Jennifer's going to modify it and go back to the previous stretch, both hands on this knee, square that foot up. And then just work the stretch. It's the same stretch. I'm getting around to it. Uh, Lauren, a lot of you guys are very comfortable to drop the left forearm to the floor. When you drop the left forearm to the floor, I want you to be, we'll be less Iyengar here. We'll be a little less technical. With the right foot turned out 45 degrees, you can actually turn it out as a child. You can actually let the outer edge of the right, you can actually let the inner edge of the foot peek open at the elbow. And you can let the right knee fall open to the right. Now, here's the cool part I really like. I like to hang on, but I like to pull this left arm straight, hollow the upper back, lift the chest, and you can find, like Angela there, you can find a little bit of a back bend. Alexa has it too. All you guys have it. Whoa! How tall are you? 6'4". Now, this is a comment. I like a 6'4 guy who can practice like a chick. The reason I say that, I was in class a long time ago, and this person was practicing. They, they say, you practice like a girl. And that was the greatest compliment. Because women, compared to guys a lot of times, generally speaking, have such an easy, beautiful practice. Us dudes have to struggle to get in the pose. But that's a big pose on a big board, and I think that's very cool. That should inspire you guys at home. Take three more breaths. Now, when you let go of that foot, don't let it snap your toes off like a slingshot. Release the foot slowly. Walk the hands back into a nice weight-bearing position. Square the right foot up. Tuck the back toes. Hold the horses. Straight left leg like a rocket ship. Stay in that right knee. Run your arms down your ribs with your palms facing the floor. Bre Y'all breathing? Breathe in here. Roll your shoulders back. Slow motion. Rise up to crescent. Big inhale. Hold that thought. Let's add, just in respect to our shoulder work from our push-ups, interlace the fingers, lace the fingers, take the palms up to the sky. I'm going to allow is an awful controlling word, isn't it? not going to allow you. I'm going to suggest if you want to make this a little back bend, there's a little bit. We had a camel behind us, but don't explode the front ribs again. But if you feel just, a lot of times, you, you know, you have a certain talent. If it's not fed, it feels oppressed. So if there's something you want to do to make the pose more free, feel free. What the heck? Take one more inhale, hands to the floor, down dog again. Hold down dog and let that whole sequence kind of assimilate. I can't believe I didn't mention it, but this class was divine for those of you who write me and say my wrists hurt in chaturanga, my elbows hurt with plank, my shoulders hurt with uh, up dog. So this is a good class. You want to skip those things. Maybe yesterday you did a balls to the wall vinyasa class, and your arms are a little tender, your elbows, your wrists are tender but you still want a good practice and your legs feel good because you went for a run. This would be a great uh, practice for something like that. Left foot steps forward. Back knee to the floor. Now, some of you at home, you could flam your right elbow down, sling your left arm up. Let's do it slow. Let's, do it. let's, let's take in, uh, task by task. Turn the left foot out. Maybe walk the left foot a few inches to the left so you got room in your hips. Bend your right knee after you pat it, perhaps. If you can't easily catch your right foot with your left hand, then grab a strap or grab a towel, lasso it, and grab the foot. What I don't want you to do is bend the left elbow. I want you to let that foot kick back and pull the left elbow straight. So by you bending your left elbow, you're telling me your bicep is stronger than your quadricep. I don't think so. I want you to kick the foot back and pull the left elbow straight. Stage two, if you care to, forearm to thigh. 
you guys can let that left foot, you can let that out, you can roll to the outer edge of your left foot, let your inner, inner arch peek open at your right elbow, those of you with the elbow down. And then peel the shoulder open. Think pull bow pose. We're going to use that in a few moments. Think pull bow for three. And two. I was just thinking about ahead to the next sequence and can't wait to do the next pose. It'd be very frustrating for this lady. It's a restrained posture. Y'all breathing? Now, one last thing I didn't mention. Just keep weighing down that right hip incrementally, innocently, inch by inch. You've got to wait it out. You've got to wait and see and shift and change. When you're ready, don't let your toes snap off. Release your toes slowly. Put the weight back onto the hands. Rearrange your foot, left foot back into a squared position for crescent inevitably. Tuck the back toes, run the arms down the ribs, hold the phone, steady. Notice how your weight is laying out over your left leg. Your left leg has no choice to become stronger to support that weight. And slow motion like a wisp of smoke, climb up into crescent. Inhale. Let's once again, this time we're going to stretch your shoulders differently. I want you guys just to reach above you and hook the thumbs. Doesn't matter which thumb, we only do this once. Try to imagine pulling the thumbs apart, but they're like chain link. You can't pull them apart. As you do that, imagine wrapping the triceps forward, drawing the shoulders down the back, containing the front ribs, containing the low belly. I imagine you want that left leg. Take one more inhale, hands to the floor, down dog, pause, and breathe. The thing about no vinyasa, you get the down dog, you just get to take a moment and recognize. You know, feel the work. Feel the sequencing. Inhale, pull the hips back. When you're ready, bend the knees, look to the fingers, and walk the feet to the hands. Glance forward on an inhale. Pause here. You know, since we use those legs, go ahead and forward fold, by the way, Uttanasana. We use the front legs so much, I want to hit those quadriceps one more time. I want to do it with chair pose in a second. Home, you guys bear with me for a second. Keep your fingertips on the floor. Feet together, Alexa. Bend your knees like you're doing chair pose, but don't use your arms yet. Just keep your fingertips on the floor. Pause. See right there at the top of your knees, at your thighs? Put your hands on your knees, your quadriceps right over the knees, and press your elbow straight. Elbow straight. Lift your heart up. So it looks like you're in a chair, except you're not using, you know, drop your chin. There's no intrusion into your low back. Now, shift the weight mostly to the heels. See if you can really, now since you're not using your arms, and since you're not using your arms, you're not using your back muscles in that very intrusive way, you could probably be here for a long time. So what I'd like you to do is like we did earlier, I want you to see if you can drop the low belly or lift the low belly and drop the tailbone. We're trying to get rid of that hyper arch in the lumbar. Don't want to negate the arch in the lumbar, but don't have that hyper arch. Reach your arms straight out in front of you with the palms facing each other. Notice how the pose got a little less uh, attractive to you just then. Keep containing the front body, the front bottom ribs particularly. And then go ahead and take the arms over here for full effective chair for five. And then do some manipulations. Drop the tail, lift the low belly. Maybe the arms overhead are too much in the shoulders. Bring them a little bit slightly forward. Chin parallel to the floor. Lean back a little bit more into the heels where you can see your toes. You can even lift your toes. Three. Take one more breath, stand straight up on the exhale, hands into prayer. All right, now this is a different version of dancer. I, I don't want it to be much different from what we've been doing thus far. I want you to bend your right knee. Go ahead and squeeze into the chest for a second. 
Now, some of you, if you're like me, you can be able to do this with one hand. Some of you can do it with two hands, but here's the tough part. We're not going to do the full dance or pose, are we? I'm very sorry. Drop your right knee to its parallel to your left knee. So you're like a flamingo, right? Keep your left hand on your left hip. Drop your right hand by your side. And turn your palm to the right. I want you to have, a, I want you to have an open hand grip, which is an open external rotation, shoulder grip. Grab the inside of the right foot and pause. Pause. No back bend for you. I want you to hang on for dear life. Now, if you're, if you're hyper flexible and comfortable in this pose, I don't hate to say hyper flexible, if you have the capacity, we're good at what we have a capacity to be good at. Doesn't mean you're flexible, you just have a good capacity for it, which may mean you have some flexibility qualities. If you can grab it with both hands, you reverse the, hand, the right hand and just grab the outer right foot, and you'll grab the inner left foot, right foot with your left hand if you want to grab it with both hands. So my first instruction on the open hand grip is a different instruction if you decide to grab it with both hands. Now, Flora, I do want you to bring the knee back a little bit. I want you to do as much quadricep stretch as you can possibly do without going into a dancer, okay? Just pull the heel into the bum. Try this, it's a dual action. As you pull the heel into the bum, kind of pull to the back wall, but push the knee forward at the same time. So there's going to be a little tug of war. If the knee comes too far forward, you've won pulling forward. If the knee goes too far back, you've won pulling back. Have a stalemate, just deal with it. Get there and go, damn, excuse me. Go, you know, <laughs> I'm not quite in dancer yet, I'm not quite standing up straight yet. Three, two, all right, now just for kicks, just for kicks, we're going toward dancer. Take the left arm up. And I don't want you to go crazy, but you've stretched that back leg enough to do it, but we haven't done that many backbends, so I'm a little concerned about you being too backbendy in a non-backbending class. But if you feel like kicking that leg up and going for a dancer, I'm not going to stop you. What the hell? Angela will go for it, I'm sure. Five. Four. They're doing good. It's pretty. Two. Come back to center. Jen, good. Come back to center. Squeeze the right knee back into the chest. Squeeze the right knee into the chest. Give it a little bit of a, you know, give it this daps. Thank you, Mr. Right Leg. Change feet. Right foot down. Left leg squeezes in. What's your hurry? Squeeze it in your chest. Squeeze it in to the knee. Knee into the chest. I want you to release that psoas and hip flexors, you know. Squeeze that knee in and release that area. I mean, think about it. Every other stretch has been, the, uh, every, this is, uh, what is that? That would be uh, flexion. Every other thing is extension, so a nice flexion. Mm-hmm. Grab the foot from the outside or grab it on the inside, palm turn outward. Don't go there yet. Remember, we're going to restrain yourself for a long time. We're going to be here for a minute before you even go towards the back bend. Flora's a professional dancer. She, she wants to do the back bend so bad she can't stand it. Yeah, well, I only, I only eat a third piece of chocolate cake so bad I can't stand it. Sometimes. Lex, you got that foot? Why is that knee in front? There. Have that knee in the back plane versus the front plane, but tug a wart. Go ahead, do your work before you do This is asparagus before the chocolate cake. How are you doing, Angela? Is this, are you Catholic? This would be purgatory for her if it was. <laughs> take, take, the, take the right arm up when you're ready. Full dance if you like. You guys be restrained. You guys at home know where you've been in your practice. We haven't been in a lot of backbend preparatory work. This quad work is really good for dancer, but we didn't really add in a lot of good shoulder work that this requires. Didn't add in a lot of good backbend work. So maybe you do this, but you do it less, uh, less aggressive. That's not a good word either. Less, with less... Uh, Flamboyance, that's a good word. Less flamboyance. Come on out. And squeeze the left knee to the chest. And set the feet on the floor. And I can't do very much more for your thighs. <laughs> I'm your thigh man. I'm your thigh man. Da -da 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 -da. Inhale, sweep the arms up to the ceiling. <sighs> wait, wait till the last moment so I got ridiculous. Fall forward on an exhale. Glance forward, 
step the plank and listen very carefully. Just because we haven't done any vinyasas, we're going to end here in a second with a vinyasa. And what's really cool, if you have an updog practice, it's going to feel really good. Matter of fact, you guys do what I'm going to do at home. Listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take another inhale. Knees or not, we're going to lower all the way to our belly. All the way down. We're going to lay flat. We're going to reach back through our legs with great extension. I want to take you from cobra to upward facing dog. So you may want to split the difference a little bit with your hands, slide them back a little bit. If cobra's your thing, stay in cobra. If you're capable of up dog, I think it's going to feel good for those quadriceps because you can really extend the legs. One back bend here. Inhale, cobra or up dog, yogi's choice. And stay there as long as you like. A couple breaths if you want, since it's your only one. And then when you're ready, you'll tuck your toes. Whenever you're ready, you at home, whenever you're ready, find your way to down dog. The forging has worn me out. Y'all stay in down dog for a minute. Just take a couple deep breaths. Let's drop onto our knees for a second. You guys here with me in the home, drop onto your knees. Find your way to Sukhasana's easy seated cross leg position. Let's all, since, let's all be on the same page so the instruction makes sense. Let's cross our right shin in front of our left shin. We're about out of time for this hour class for you. I wouldn't mind finishing. Our twists have been pretty aggressive and pretty strong up until now. Let's just do a real soft. Any poses, the first couple of minutes before for Savasana me is more of a ceremony than anything. So just a beautiful ceremonial twist. We'll put the left hand on the right knee, the right hand behind the small of the back. Lean back at first for a moment. You can actually release the hip flexor, the obliques and stuff when you lean back a bit. And then lift the chest, and then you can use the right arm to lift yourself back up towards the vertical. And use the left arm to start to turn the twist. And breathe. We did, you know, we did a lot of those twists at the beginning of class within the Crescent series. I actually did those twists just to keep it on the legs a longer time. So we were multitasking. We we're getting some twists in because they feel so good. But mostly we were holding those lunges forever to get those quadricep work. So this twist is kind of sweet to go along with those. And then come back to the center and we just change the legs the other way. Left leg is in front, right leg is behind. You don't have to be so uh, precise in your cross leg position, but Sukhasana, feet wider than the knees could be sweet. Right hand, left knee, left hand. Remember, lean back at first to release the tension. I can lean back. I feel like I get more lift in my spine. And then once I've twisted, then I can start working myself back to vertical. You know, it goes back to that whole gradualism thing, slowly but surely. And look over the left shoulder. And breathe. And then keep your twist on. Turn your head back to center. And slowly release the twist. I want to stay where I'm at. You kids here with me and you guys at home, reach your legs out in front of you. And slowly roll onto your backs in our favorite moment, Savasana. Savasana. Make sure in Savasana you make yourself comfortable. You want the feet to fall open. You want the palms to fall open. I would stay with the rhythm of the breath. I wouldn't necessarily control it. I would let go of my control of the breath, my pranayama work, and I would just be with the rhythm of it. Feel the subtle and the natural shallowness of the inhale and exhale. And the rhythm and the pulsation of the breath. Either that, or scan your body from the tip of your toes to the crown of your head, and from the crown of your head back to the tip of your toes, and just notice any sensations within the body. 
and that's the, fin- the physical body, the energetic body, the mental body, the emotional body. If you don't work on one of those tasks, the rhythm of the breath, Anapani, you know, the wisdom, the yoga of wisdom through observation, or notice the benefit of the physical practice, and you're just laying here, your mind will go into the past and rehash and regret or go into the future and plan and become anxious. So even here, give your body something to do, and I'll pull you out of it in a couple of minutes. We'll just relax for a moment. Savasana. So it's not to disturb you. We're going to move on. If you're at home, stay there in Savasana as long as you possibly can. The house is empty. Stick around a while. If you've got to rush off, take another moment or two. Thanks for joining us at diet.com. And thanks for enjoying the no vinyasa vaganza class. Namaste, everybody. <laughs>